Hi, this is Gail. Welcome to my channel. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the Nikon D5500 and its articulating screen and what we thought about that for vlogging and vlogging. But a camera is no good without a lens. So today, we're going to be talking about the Nikon 18 to 140 millimeter lens and whether or not this is a good lens for beginners. Christmas season is right around the corner, and although this video isn't specifically for Christmas, I think it's important to talk about the lenses because nobody wants to spend money on a lens and get stuck with one that they're not going to like. So we're going to talk about this lens and if it's good and, and what makes it good. Why is it a good lens for a beginner? But before we get into this, the first thing I want to do is ask you to like this video. Give me that big old thumbs up because it's really important. The next thing that I want you to do is subscribe. If you haven't already done so, if you haven't already joined the channel, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get all the updates about all the videos that come out about the channel. And if you click that button, you'll give them I'm pretty much up to the minute. So by subscribing, you'll follow our videos. But to get those notifications, you just got to click that little bell. Just the way they do things around here. So with that being said, let's get on into talking about uh, is this Nikon 18 to 140 millimeter lens good uh, for beginners. So we're going to be doing that. Um, I've already got a text message coming in. Hang on a second. This is from a friend of mine and she's wanting to know if I'm going to be talking about the camera today. So let me text her back. Because I told her that I we would be discussing. The, okay. So I'm just clarifying. It's not the camera. It's the lens. Okay, there we go. So who have we got? Melissa's in here. Hi, Melissa. How are you? Is your son doing okay with his homework? So we have Melissa Severson in here, and she is one of my moderators. She is just a dear person. She comes into a lot of my live streams, so which I want to say thank you for, Melissa. No. So going, we're just going to talk about the lens. It's kind of an opener today. And we may, we always get stuck rabbit going down rabbit trails. So after we finish the lens review, there's no telling what we'll discuss. <clears throat> so first, going back to the lens. Um, I have it here and it's attached to my Nikon. D5500, which is what I use it for often. Um, I also have the Nikon D7200, which I gave to my husband, because it did not have this flip out articulating screen. And that's really something you have to have for vlogging. The other thing that you want for vlogging is a good lens, preferably. A wide angle lens. Now, when I say good, I'm talking about two different things. I'm talking about the range, the focal length of the lens, and also the width, and also the clarity, and also the reliability. So, when I say a good lens, it encompasses all of those attributes. So, let's just start talking first about the clarity of the lens. Hi again, Melissa. I'm going to type hello here in the description box. So we're going to start. Let's talk about the clarity of the lens, okay? Um, people get stuck on is this brand of lens better than this one? I like Nikon, but there's some really good sort of I don't even want to call them knockoff lenses. They're kind of the difference between 
the brand kind of and going to the generic, although the lens aren't too generic. That's the best description I could give you. Um, the other lenses are that I like to use with this are Sigma or Tamron. Both of those lenses, Rokinon's got a good solid reputation. All of those should provide you pretty good quality. Now, hi, Tanya Lambert, and welcome. Tanya just came in. Now, we just talked to her on overcoming the obstacles. So if you get a chance to go check out that channel, it's youtube.com forward slash overcoming the obstacles. She has a great story about her life and overcoming cerebral palsy, going from birth through graduation to college. You'll be amazed. So uh, the clearness or the clarity of the lens comes into play on all lenses you've got you want to have good crisp photos but there's a difference in what you can get away with depending on if you're going to be printing the photos or if you're going to view them on the computer a computer has a lower resolution so you don't necessarily need a super expensive camera and a super expensive lens to get photos that will make you happy if you're only going to view them on the computer that being said, if you're going to print them out, if you're going to give them as Christmas gifts or if you're going to make an album or a book, then a brand like Sigma or Tamron may give you a softer focus that's just not going to be quite as sharp as you want. So there's some lot of good out options out there for lenses. And the average person is not going to notice too much of a quality difference whether you get, or at least I couldn't, um, whether you get the Nikon or the Sigma. But where it comes into play is, you know, competitions. If you're going to blow up something that's going to be on your wall, like 16 by 20 size and up, then something like that's going to give you a sharper focus is really the way to go. I find that out of the three lenses that I just mentioned, being Nikon, Sigma, and Tamron, I find a little bit more of a firmer edge on the Nikon. But when I'm not printing, and when I'm not printing specifically in the large photos, like the 16 by 20 and up, then I don't recognize a difference. So when you're talking about an SLR, Oh, yeah, Melissa, I totally get you, both on laundry and no idea what you would get as far as the cameras go. Um, this is the Nikon D5500. I got it as a refurbished model on Amazon for about $487. And you can get like the D3300, 3500 stuff for even less. So I hear you on the laundry duty. So thanks for popping in. Uh, the ease of caring for the lenses, they're very, very simple. They're very easy to care for and use. You just want to be careful taking them on and off the camera. You know, don't drop them. Don't bang them around. Um, if they're not on the camera, you, you may benefit by keeping them in a storage bag. My camera bag has little compartments in it that are designed specifically for lenses. So if the lens isn't on my camera, it's in the bag. And I have several lenses that I flip back and forth with. Um, but the one I use predominantly uh, is this Nikon 18 to 140 millimeter lens. So why is that a good lens? Is it a good lens for beginners? Um, we're going to be talking about that. I want to show you some photos that I've taken with the lens in just a minute. Let me first show you on Amazon because um, the next question I get is, you know, should I get a refurbished lens or not? What are the difference? What are the pros and cons? Uh, primarily on a refurbished lens, you're going to pay a lot less for it than you will one that's straight off the shelves. So don't think of a refurbished lens as some kind of damaged goods that's going to fall apart on you. It's not that way, especially if you go, yes. Um, you can only use this with a Nikon camera unless you purchase a special adapter. And that's across the board. So if you get a Canon, you can only use Canon 
if you have, unless you have an adapter, like Canon's not going to go with Nikon, Nikon's not going to go with Canon. Neither one of them will fit a Sony unless you have the special adapters. So that's, that's just across the board with your SLR cameras. So let's just look for a second um, at refurbished versus full price. Certified refurbished on Amazon comes with a warranty, and, and that's always very important to me. In fact, I oftentimes will buy the extended warranty if it's available, just because I feel better having insurance. I tend to drop my lenses sometimes, and so I just feel better having a, a insurance with that. So the Nikon here, what we're seeing is the, this is an ad for the certified refurbished and includes a three-piece filter kit. Now these are special filters that you get to put on your camera lens. Um, they make them do special things, cut glare. Um, one's just a plain filter and that's actually designed to help protect the front of your lens, which is kind of nice. You're less likely to damage it if you break it. Your filter will break before the lens. So this set we're looking at $279.95. This is on Amazon, okay? But when I flip over to this focus, and I pulled this up earlier so it would, would be ready, so naturally the page is loading again. Um, here we go. Okay, this is also refurbished. So, so let me go back in and just type in, I don't know why that one's showing is unavailable. So let me go in and just type in 18 to 140 and see what we can find. Uh, keep in mind that this particular refurbished unit with lenses is 279.95 currently on Amazon. And this can all change. So here we go. <clears throat> Just the lens alone without those lenses, without the filters. This one's showing up at $4,695, not refurbished. So you can see the difference in the price savings there the refurbished versus the real price. So is it any wonder people go for refurbished? And so I don't know what this is. Oh, I closed the wrong window a minute ago. Sorry, here it is on the full price. And then a minute ago, we were looking at 279 with filters. What's the big difference between the two? Well, the big difference between the two is in whether or not it's the refurbished straight off or straight off the shelf um, as never been owned. A refurbished lens, that doesn't mean anything is wrong with it. And it doesn't really mean anything has been wrong with it necessarily, but it has been sent for some kind of work. So maybe it just needed to be cleaned or maybe they had to do heavier duty stuff to it. But with Amazon refurbished, the thing is you get a warranty and it's the same as the manufacturer's warranty and you can send it back to Amazon. If you get it Amazon Prime and get it fulfilled by Amazon, you can send it back and the return is super simple. I had to do that on any of my camera gear that I purchased as a refurb. I got this back in February of last year, the D5500, and it's a refurbished lens. I also bought, after dropping my husband's lens, which was like this horrifying moment, after I dropped that and it did break, the piece on the back of it broke, just a little crack. But after that, um, I bought him another refurbished lens, also the 18-140. to 140. So all you're paying for is the difference sometimes in a warranty. Your warranty may be 90 days or because Amazon, you 
you will get a minimum of 90 day warranty and it's just like what the factory warranty would be as far as what it would cover and with the full price lens you'll get usually a one year warranty so you get you do get that difference but you pay for it just about all my camera gear is refurbished i haven't i have not had a problem the nikon d7200 that my husband now has is a refurbished this lens is a refurbished the Ref I got a refurbished lens on his camera. My com my camera's been refurbished. For me, they've just been a really good deal, and I have no not noticed any change in going for refur refurbished versus straight off the shelf. There is a little bit of a frustration in that none of the lens comes with this. This is a lens hood. So you have to buy that separately. These things are about 10 bucks. It's just something that, in my opinion, ought to come with it. So pet peeve of mine, if you happen to be listening, manufacturers, and you happen to care, I'd like to have a lens hood with my next lens. So this has got great glass. You can't hardly beat Nikon quality for glass, okay? It's clear. It's sharp. No problems there. What I really like about the 18 to 140 lens and what completely has me sold on it for a beginner's lens is just it's the range. You can go from wide angle to distance. This the 140 portion is what you consider a telephoto. We hear the word zoom lens being kicked around a lot and there can be a lot of different ideas on that, so to speak, as far as whether a zoom is a telephoto or just a super zoom. And it will take the lenses, it will take the telepho telephoto type, but zoom lenses also can often go a little bit farther but you're really sacrificing picture quality compared to what you're getting with when you buy an SLR and a telephoto lens. So this lens will go from a wide angle of 18 on up to the telephoto 140. This lens is also sturdy. Um, it fits on the camera well when you're holding it to shoot with it. Um, it feels good. It's not too heavy. Um, it's got an aperture of five, up to 5.6, which is nice. So what I want to do now is show you some photos that I took with the 18 to 140. Let me pull this up. Give me just one second here. And really, one of the most important features for me to have on a lens is vibration reduction because I sometimes shake and we all know that I'm wobbly on my feet sometimes. So vibration reduction is a really important feature. And that just is self-explanatory. It helps reduce the vibration that you're picking up in the lens. And you're going to get some vibration just from holding it from small vibrations of the earth, you name it. Okay, so this is my blog, you've been reviewed.net, and on this I have uploaded the photos. Now I've not touched these up, except I did darken one of the photos just a little bit, and that was this leaf photo. Let me pull this out. Now this leaf photo was taken with the wide angle. This is the 18 millimeter. So what I did was I wanted to focus. Let me see if I can get the cursor positioned right. I wanted to focus on, come up here, this little leaf right here in the middle, which completely gets lost in everything you see around it. 
all of the other leaves and debris and so forth. So I focused in using the telephoto feature and standing in the same spot, all I did was extend this lens uh, to the, the 140 millimeter, which is the telephoto. And you can now see this leaf right here in the middle. So that gives you an idea of the difference. I'm standing in the same spot taking pictures of leaves that are on the ground, same leaves. This is using the 140 millimeter to kind of zoom in with that telephoto a little bit. And this is using the 18 millimeter. So it kind of depends on what you want to do as far as when you want to use it. For a beginner, this can be important because it's got a, a nice range. You're not super up close, but you're not super far away either. And to give you a comparison on a landscape photo, um, I took this earlier from my front yard. This tree way back here is what I was aiming on. I hope you can see that. That one way back there in the middle. So I decided to take a photo. This is what you see with the wide angle 18 millimeter. And I decided to photograph, try to photograph the tree up a little closer with the 140 millimeter lens. Again, standing in the same spot. So you can treat, see the tree right well there. This is not the best composed photo because I just wanted to be able to give you the comparison with the tree of both the telephoto portion and the wide angle. So for, for times that you want to be standing on the ground and then try to get a photo of a hawk or a falcon in a tree, that's why you need the difference in the focal length of the lens. Because as a beginner, you're going to want to get all those shots and you don't necessarily know you don't necessarily know what lens does what job. So you're going to be grabbing, fumbling in your camera gear. This eliminates a lot of that just by going ahead and getting the 18 millimeter to 140 millimeter. Um, it's got a good aperture range, uh, 3.5 to 5.6. Uh, like I said, it's lightweight. I think personally that you're looking at the ideal lens for a beginner. Um, does this camera take video as well? Yes. Uh, the Nikon D5500 is what I shoot a lot of my videos on. When we go to the $40 day trips, for example, I use that a lot. What you don't want is you don't want simply a flip out screen when you go to do vlogging. You want a screen that is going to pull out and articulate a fully articulating screen. Let me get the strap out of the way. We'll spin pretty much any direction that you want to put it into, whether it's half, three quarters, straight toward you, straight up, part way up. And it can hold in just about any position. Now, it won't go like all the way down, but it'll go just about every other way. Okay, you can still get your 360 just about with it. Okay, so that's super important. The thing that I really didn't like about the Nikon D7200, even though it's known for the filmmaking capabilities, this lens would not articulate. So when I'm holding it out like this and I'm doing vlogging, I have nothing to go by, which is why you really want a screen that articulates because when you're blogging, vlogging, you want to be able to see. Okay. Um, the other thing I like about this camera is it does take really good shots. It, if you want to have a good body, the lens matters a little, little bit more than the body as far as sharpness but they do work in tandem. So 
yeah i like this this particular setup a lot for vlogging i love this lens because of the range that it's got now a common a common length to get with your camera is an 18 to 55 millimeter and that's really good for like portraits you can still get some landscapes with it but where it really shines is for a little bit closer up um for like portraits it's a nice portrait lens the you're gonna when you want a little bit of an extended range there is you can get a 55 to 200 or a 55 to 300 millimeter lens those are nice that gives you the telephoto range what the 18 to 140 lens does is it combines both of those features so that you have a nice telephoto range but also one that's going to be good for wide angles and it can adjust for close-up work or anywhere in between that range i think it's more versatile and i really think that's the key to a beginner's lens is having something that's more versatile but now you're if you're used to a super zoom type of camera that you, where you can take it and it'll zoom all the way out to like a 600 millimeter equivalent which means you can see the bird sneeze on top of the light pole this won't do it where the difference is is those super zooms which are great cameras i had one and i liked it but when it's fully extended it gets really blurry and you can't really see the photo this one when it's fully extended and you're using the 140 millimeter or if you go up and you get um say one of the longer lengths like a 300 millimeter you can see it it's going to be a very sharp photo whereas some of the photos with the super zoom lenses they just don't have the sharpness let me see if i can find one on my blog where i can show you what i mean um let me see and then i can pull it up and you can see the difference if i've still got one on my blog here we go okay here we go i found something um i had a fuji super zoom wonderful for sturdiness wonderful for reliability uh not so wonderful when it came to taking the long distance pictures not bad but it just wasn't quite as sharp as the slr with the telephoto let me pull this up here's my daughter some of you guys have met her stellar on here there she is uh, she was a lot younger but pulling this in well there we go you, that's as far as it's going to go okay um you can see that this photo and these features are a little soft going back let me pull up the other one if i can hit the right keys here So going back and pulling up the other one, um, this was on the telephoto. And this one, the details are just a lot sharper. You can see this individual blade of grass. If we go in here and let's see, where did that one go? There it is. You can't really see all these little individual blades of grass. Um, this is softer. Her t-shirt looks a little fuzzy when it comes to the writing on the t-shirt. And her face is soft. On this, you see good sharp edges. And you can see individual blades of grass. So this is the difference in what you're going to get with the super zoom camera versus the 18 the nikon d5500 with that 18 to 140 lens 
both pictures. The picture of my daughter is a good picture. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that if I was doing print work, it just wouldn't be really sharp. Uh, on the computer, it's fine. You just are going to want something sharper. So I hope that helps. So, yeah. And again, Nikon has got a great reputation when it comes to quality of product. It's just really hard to beat Nikon. Canon has a great reputation also. Um, I would put them head to head, and a lot of people do. Uh, there are typically, typically you're a Canon person or you're a Nikon person or you're a Sony person. And it's just really, it's a matter of preference. All of those are good lenses, good equipment, good cameras. It just becomes a matter of preference. What you want to do is you do want to kind of stick in that. If you start out with Canon and you like it, you do kind of want to stick with Canon. Or if you start out with Nikon and you like it, you do want to kind of stick with Nikon. And the reason being is because what we talked about earlier, the Nikon lenses will stay with the Nikon cameras and Canon lenses will always fit Canon cameras. That's important when you go to invest in multiple lenses and equipment. So there you go. Uh, so that's why I think the 18 to 140 is a great lens for be beginners. Uh, I also think that refurbished is the way to go because like on this one, I saved over $200 just by getting the refurbished and love it. I've had no problems with any of the refurbished products that I bought on Amazon. So anyway, so there you go. If you guys have any questions, um, leave them down in comments below. Again, share the video and like it. And I appreciate y'all tuning in. Sunday night will go live as well. And we really don't have a topic for those. We just talk about whatever. The reason we're talking about cameras today is because a couple of weeks ago when I did the Nikon D5500, a couple of people contacted me afterwards, okay, more than a couple, wanting to know more about lenses. So I thought we'd talk about that today. So, so what do you guys think? Are you Nikon people, Canon people? Why? Why not? Let me know. Leave that in the comments below. Um, also, do you guys, do you all find these types of videos helpful or would you just rather hang out and talk? Uh, let me know that both in the comments and if you're on my YouTube page, if that's youtube.com forward slash group forward slash Gail vlogs. So definitely let me know over there too. And I want to thank you all for hanging out and being with me today. If you get a chance, go see Overcoming the Obstacles. Check on the video that Tanya did. You're going to be super impressed. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day. And we're going to see you out, about, and online. Bye.